God's honoring this. You know, some people say, well, I don't think y'all have parking lot church. If, if, if we were missing God, he wouldn't be here. Let me say that again. If we were missing God with this, he wouldn't be here and he's here right now. So I'm thankful. Amen. I've enjoyed our roundtable discussions we've had the past few weeks. But uh, I'm enjoying this. Thank you, Jesus. And I believe things are ending right now with this whole lockdown situation. The prophecies declared, the prophecies that people have brought forth declared that it passed over time, resurrection day time, it would see a turnaround. So this is another, another pivot point for us. A pivotal moment in time where God's doing something different. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. I had heard several prophecies. While he's taking this up, I'm going to keep speak, speaking. Several prophecies came forth that this year would be split into three parts. One would be a testing. The second would be a preparation. The third would be outpouring. Well, I'm ready for the outpouring. How about you? Had enough of this testing stuff. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, listen, are you ready for the word this morning? Can I get an amen? You need microphones yourself, don't you? <laughs> yeah, honk your horns, right? Well, let me get this. <laughs> amen. Welcome to Grace Fellowship of Georgetown this morning. The Spirit of God has already shown up in life and power. And uh, he's confirming that we're to be here today. And I'm excited to be able to share the word and experience just this visitation of the Holy Spirit. Aren't you glad you came? We've told the people to honk their horns if they uh, want to say amen. But uh, hold off right now, amen. I want to start reading this morning in Matthew chapter 28. We had started there earlier. But let's go to verse number 5. And it says, And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not, for I know that ye seek Jesus which was crucified. He is not here, for He is risen. We're celebrating the day that Jesus rose from the dead, and He made it possible that we could also rise from the dead and be delivered from death and the curse and the future of hell. And now all we have laid up for us is blessing. And hope in heavenly eternity. What a loving God we serve. That it would send His Son to die on the cross for us. That we could have this newness of life. I want to turn to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 6. And now the wind's going to try to kick up, huh? I want to read verse number 8, Romans chapter 6, verse 8. It says, Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with Him. Through the cross, through faith in the cross, we have the ability to turn our lives over to Jesus. We can ask Him to forgive our sins. And through faith in that sacrifice, we can be born again and receive newness of life. We can be made a new creation in Christ. Forgiven from sin, made a new, a new type of being, a being without a sin nature. And God now has made us Christians, saints for the Most High God. Oh, thank God for that. But it says, death hath no more dominion over him. Why? Because he raised from the dead. And if we believe in him, we also are raised with Him by faith in the operation of God. When you receive Jesus as Christ as your Savior, you died to your old man. You died to your, own, your old life. And you received a new promise, a, a new life, and a new inner nature. And now with the ability to also be positioned where death has no more dominion over us. Think about it. Even if they kill you, even if something was to take us out, we go straight to heaven, straight to be with God. 
the best they can do is promote us. You know, I believe that's a spiritual principle pretty much. That when the enemy rises up against us, we'll stand our ground. It'll only end up in our promotion. And if somehow someone was to die that knows the Lord, is walking with Him, it's a, it's a promotion. We go straight to be with the Father. But however, we have no intention of dying right now, right? Our work is not finished. God's called us to bring forth the end time glory of God. And I'm telling you, coronavirus is not going to stop us. Lockdowns are not going to stop us. Oh, you might hold Jesus in the grave for a little bit, but eventually, soon, He's coming out of that grave. The lockdown is going to end. The quarantine will cease. And when He raises from the dead, He bursts something new. When Jesus rose from the dead, He went to meet with His, with his disciples. He breathed on them and said, Receive newness of life. Receive you the Holy Spirit. Your sins be forgiven you. And within a short time, He birthed the church. The body of Christ that is risen with Him. We have nothing to fear. We're saints of God. Oh, children of the Most High, Creator, Almighty God. We have everything to be excited about. Our greatest days are here now. They're being birthed right now. You know, there's been some concern over during this lockdown time of people losing their excitement for church. But not here. Because I know you guys. I know when the, when the enemy tries to lock you down, when the, when the virus or the governor tries to shut you down, not attacking what's being done, just saying when this happens, you're not going to walk away from the things of God. You're going to increase them. You're going to increase your prayer time. You're going to take this this downtime to spend more time in the Word, more time seeking God. And I have no doubt when we come back together, we'll be stronger than ever. We are able to assemble inside of our church buildings. We're going to be more anointed than ever and more on fire to fulfill the calls of God on our lives than ever. This is an exciting time for the people that really love God. Oh, the lukewarm may grow cold, but the on fire for God will just get hotter. And I'm telling you, the temperature is rising right now. Amen? I want to go to a, a verse in the book of Micah. So if you would turn with, with me to Micah chapter 7. Hallelujah. Hopefully it doesn't take me too long to find it. Micah chapter 7, and I want to read verse number 8. Verse number 8 says, Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy, when I fall. In this case, when I'm locked up or locked down, when I'm in quarantine. O enemy, don't get too excited to think you're going to stop the move of God just because we've, you know, we've had to halt in some of our efforts temporarily. Don't get too excited, devil, because it says, I shall arise. If Jesus rose, we've got to arise. Jesus rose from the dead. We've got to come out of that place of shutdown as well. The stone was rolled away from Him and uh, we've got to throw open our doors and be ready to launch out into the world once this thing ends. Amen? I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, oh, glory to God. Now there I'm sure it's talking about a spiritual darkness. But for us, it would just be a lockdown state. When I'm shut in, the Lord shall be a light unto me. We're in the most exciting time to be alive the church has ever known. We're the end time generation God's bringing His glory to. And I don't know about you, but there's a vigilance, a, a determination rising up in me even at a higher level to launch out and fulfill all God's called us to do. The enemy tried to throw you know, a, a, a snag in what we're doing with the church's uh, targeting, but it's failing. It's failing in this nation. It's failing in the world. And God's Spirit will not be restrained. 
He will not be locked down. And it's time for the church to come out of their homes very, very soon and birth something new. Jesus birthed the church. We're going to birth the glory of God coming to Georgetown and the surrounding areas, in fact, into all the earth. Those with a heart to press in should be more excited than ever before. We shall arise. In fact, I want to, I want to focus this morning on our rising up at this time. Go to Psalm 20. Psalms 20. There's a verse I want to get to in this psalm, but we have to read everything before it to get there. But I believe this psalm speaks to somewhat where we are right now. It says in verse 1, The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee. I'm telling you, God's defending us right now. Now we didn't know, we did not know when this so-called pandemic broke out how bad it was going to be. Some were predicting millions of Americans were going to die. Some were saying, you know, it's going to, it's going to just wipe out whole segments of the population. We really didn't know. Of course, this turned out just to be a trickle of what they projected. But I'm telling you, the last Sunday we met before the lockdown was proclaimed, God told me in our church, none of our people would get this virus. In fact, He says, you won't even get sick during this time because I'm increasing the anointing on your body. Now at the time when I said that, it looked like maybe that was going to be a challenge. Who are you to say such a thing? Of course, it's turned out to be nationally nothing like they thought, at least in Kentucky. But I'm telling you, God's got our backs. He's our protector. He's our guard. He's our shield. Amen? The God of Jacob is defending us. Verse 2. Send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Now Zion actually is a representation of the church. And God's bringing strength out of the church. I'm seeing people that have, have resisted. How can I say this? Any concern about their spiritual condition starting to look toward God. I'm watching people that may be on the fence are starting to look to the prophetic. God's drawing hearts to Him like never before, at least in my lifetime through this, through this attack. Whatever the enemy does for evil, God will turn for His good. It says in verse 3, Remember all thy offerings and accept the burnt sacrifice, Selah. Grant thee according to thine own heart and fulfill all thy counsel. We will, God's going to finish His work. He's got a plan. The earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. It's already decreed. It's going to happen. There's got to be a time it's going to take place. Who would have believed a year ago, six months ago, we would be in the condition nationally we're in now? That we would see, you know, the turnaround in the economy and, and the labor market and then, and, and, you know, shutdowns all around. Who would have thought that would have happened? Probably almost no one. Just a few. But I'm telling you, we already have a promise. He's coming back for a glorious bride. And just like there was a suddenly with this virus, God got a suddenly. He's about to bring forth with an outpouring of His presence on the earth. And He says, I'm coming through my people. Paul declared, I'm, I'm going to reveal to you a mystery hidden from ages and generations, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. I believe God's been preparing us during this time for an explosion of His presence once we come out of this. It's almost like I can see us at home spending time in the Word, spending time in prayer and being blown up like a big balloon full of the power of God. Then when it comes time that our doors are flung open, it's time to release on the earth. Because I'm telling you, each one of you are going to have a witness. Each one of you have a testament of what God did during this time. 
Each one is going to come out with an excitement to release the Spirit of God to everybody you come in contact with. God's got a plan. He's going to see it fulfilled. Verse 5, we will rejoice in thy salvation. In the name of our God, we will set up our banners. And the Lord fulfill all thy petitions. This is the time frame that, that David's talking about here, that God's going to answer all your prayers. I've noticed something here lately. I'm a person of faith. I'm a person that sees prayers answered. I'm a person of expectation of prayers to be answered. But I've watched God answer even the smallest prayers lately uh, in a fashion that surprised me. I've had things where I forgot where I put them and I would stop and just say pray. I'd pray, God, where are they? You know, I'm not going to search anymore until you show me. And I would see it and go get it. I've had where I would just call upon God, His presence would fill the place I'm at. Way beyond what I thought was possible. But especially there's been there's risen up within me, and I believe you as well, because you've been seeking God. An expectation of what you say is going to come to pass. That your petitions are going to be fulfilled. That it's your time to soar, your time to rise, your time to come out on top. And you know that God's partnering with you. I hope you were feeling that yourselves. See, if you'll fight the fear, grab a hold of faith. God will always bring back more into your life than you thought was going was to come. And I'm telling you, God's answering our petitions. It says in verse 6, Now know I that the Lord saveth his anointed. I, I hope no one has lost any loved ones in this. I personally don't even know anybody that has coronavirus. Haven't known anybody. I know there's been, you know, 20,000 Americans have died. I've not known any of them personally. I've not known anybody that really had it with any symptoms. And hopefully you haven't as well. But I do know this. God saveth his anointed. He saves the one that draws close to him. There's a shield about you. He's our glory and the lifter of our heads. It's our time to arise. It says, He will hear from His holy heaven with the saving strength of His right hand. God hears our prayers right now. He's heard our petitions. It's time for the glory to come forth. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Where's your trust? Where's your hope? It's in the Lord <laughs> who made heaven and earth that this virus is nothing before our mighty God. We cannot defeat it. We will not quit. We come out on top. They are brought down. Verse 8. Here's what I want to get to. Verse 8. They, the wicked, the evil, those who would rise against God, those who would resist the things of the Spirit, they are brought down and fallen. Not only is it time for the church to arise, but I believe it's time that we're going to see the wicked collapse. We'll see changes in the church that are not serving God. Changes in the nation of those who are resisting the moves of God. And change in every area of our society is the glory of God's birth forth. God's coming back for a revived nation. Amen? Again, it's been 30 years ago. I had a vision of a water tower opening up as intercessors would pray. And inside that water tower was birthed a city of glory. And that same water tower I'm looking at right now straight out our front doors of this church. God is bringing the glory of God, the restoration power of God to Georgetown, Kentucky, to this region through His people that would draw close to Him. You're more important to God than you think. You're more valuable to the kingdom than you could possibly imagine. You're the ones that are going to usher in the end time glory of God to this planet, to this region. And see God bring revival. It says again, verse 8, they are brought down and fallen, but we 
are risen and stand upright. See, I know a lot of people had quite a bit of couch time lately. You know, what are you going to do? Walk around in circles in your house all day? I guess you can go out in the yard and do some things. I do, I've been working in the yard some. But when our doors are thrown open, we're going to stand up. We're going to rise. The community ambassadors of this church are going to see open doors before them they never thought they would see. I have heard person after person say, once this virus hit America, everything has changed. I believe that. And they've said as well, once it's finished, once the, the quarantine is over, the nation is not going to return back to like it was. I believe that as well. But they're talking about it not returning back to normal in the fashion of, you know, we're going to still going to social distance. We will, I've heard people saying we won't shake hands anymore. Well, I may, I may not. I may just go straight to hugging. Just skip the shaking hands. We'll just go straight to a hug. What they're talking about is because the fear has made a, a deposit in the nation. We can't go back to where we were. Because people are now afraid of transmitting this disease. We can no longer fellowship like we did in the past. We can no longer go out in public like we did before. And there's concerns that restaurants will shut down. Movie theaters will shut down. People, places where people can't congregate will have to shut down because of the still residual fear. Well, I have a different mindset. I think instead of a residual fear, there's going to be an outpouring of the glory that will dominate all fear. I believe there'll be a power of God released that instead of being concerned about fear's residual effect, it's going to be with the glory deposits on this area and on the nation and on the world. See, again, the devil doesn't have to just keep us in lockdown permanently if he can keep fear in place. But God has a plan through His saints that reject fear to answer their petitions of restoration, to bring a move of God that will wipe out fear, that will bring us not back to where we were, but way beyond with the love of God being shed abroad, not just through our hearts, but to everybody we come in contact with. What an exciting time to be alive. To watch God once more pull the, pull the rug out from under the devil. To shut down his efforts to hinder what God would do. And to once again play the trump card. Oh, there's that trump card again. To play that trump card and undo all the works of the enemy. We are risen and stand up. Save, Lord, let the king hear us when we call. He is. You know, if you think about it, when Jesus rose from the dead, the first major act He did was to birth the church on the day of Pentecost. And it says, the Spirit of God came in like a mighty rushing wind and it rested on the, he on the heads of all those there seeking Him. It was resting on the heads of the 120. Those who were diligent not to quit when fear was trying to overtake everybody else. And that power released birth the church that 8,000 people were saved in one week through that 120. In the same fashion. See, God didn't birth the church for us just to hang around and try to do some nice deeds, you know, just to kind of smile and walk around and tell people Jesus loves you. He birthed us to bankrupt the devil, to spoil the kingdom of darkness, to put the enemy under our feet and to show the world the true power of God. We shall arise. It's our time. Look at Isaiah chapter 60. Probably in this church we can quote this passage by now. Isaiah chapter 60. And look at the first word of that chapter. Arise. We're risen. It's our time. Time to stand up. Time to expect God to move in your life. Time to shake off the chains of fear and bondage and move out. 
I'm not talking about disobeying the quarantine. I'm talking about when this thing is lifted. To move out and expect the power of God to move through us. Expect your prayers to be answered. So it says, arise and shine. See, we've been couch potatoes now for about a month. We've been cooped up for a month. Those that, you know, didn't have essential jobs, that didn't work at liquor stores or <coughs> such as that. It's not time for us just to stand up and be the same. It's time to arise and shine. Can anybody believe that with me? Let me have a horn honk if you can accept that right now. Just to let me know you're out there. Praise God. Amen. I noticed three of you didn't honk. I wrote your names down. I took your license plate numbers. Praise God. Arise. Time to shine. For the light is come. I'm telling you the presence of God is here right now. Powerfully. Letting us know it's time for us to shine. The light is here. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. Do you know what gross darkness produces? Do you have any idea what gross darkness really produces when it's on an area? Cluelessness. It's not that people can't see, you know, with their physical eyes, what's around them, they can't see spiritually. They can't see God moving in their midst. And they pass laws that want to authenticate abortion or approve of homosexuality or whatever weird, I don't know if the weird's the right word, whichever ungodly trend is trying to move through a land. Broke darkness produces people that are willing to accept these things. It's okay to kill a baby even once it's born. But I'm telling you, the light exposes the darkness. And it allows people to see that couldn't see before. And unless the church rises up to shine, people will stay in gross darkness. This nation's future is at stake based on what we do right now coming out of this lockdown period. Did you hear me on that? This nation's future is, is dependent upon what we do right now. I was thinking about this this morning. <clears throat> if things continue as they are, I believe the enemy's already won the next generation. Because he took over the school systems years ago. We've got a, you, we've got a young populace willing to embrace socialism. Willing to embrace ungodly mindsets. Willing to shove the Bible aside and say, we choose to be our own God. They've already been trained in that. Humanism has swept through America. It's already in our young people. And only the power of God's light has the ability to open their eyes to truth. Only another awakening, another move of God has the ability to turn things around in this country. Amen. And it is our assignment of God to birth this illuminating glory into the earth. Are there any volunteers? Now you can't do it of yourself. You don't have the ability. But you can say, God, use me. God, anoint me. God, give me divine appointments that I can be used by you to be a blessing to others around me. It's amazing. When we volunteer to be used by God, He always does more than we thought He was going to do. And you can think maybe you're just going to give somebody a nice edifying word, but instead the power of God will come on you to heal. It could be you think you're just going to you know, bring somebody over a nice blessing and instead God has you operate in miracle power. It's our time to arise. Can you believe if you lay hands on the sick, they'll recover? Can you believe you have the ability to cast up devil's own blind, open blind eyes and raise the dead? It's available right now for those who will step out and say, God, use me. And to stand up 
but rise, come off the couch, and want to function in the supernatural power of God. God use us. God, come on the scene. Isaiah chapter 60 again. Verse 2 again. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee and His glory shall be seen upon thee. So many people are waiting for a cloud of glory to come upon the church, to come upon the cities in these end times. But God says, no, it's coming up out of you. I've already placed a deposit in you of my Holy Spirit. And if you'll submit to the leading of God, to the leading of the Spirit, God's going to bring the glory through us. It's time to arise. Verse 3, and Gentiles, the Gentiles, the unbelievers, shall come to thy light and kings to the brightness of thy, of thy rising. I'm telling you, God's doing something with rising right now. He's doing something with, with, with us as far as willingness to step out and be used of God. We rise up. Just like when Jesus came out of the tomb, He burst something new. God's going to burst something through His saints who will rise up at this time and say, God, use me. Verse 4, lift up thine eyes round about and see. I want you to remember that statement. Lift up your eyes round about and see. You hear me? Lift up your eyes. See what God says He's going to do. Get in the Word and find out what He's prophesied for the end times. And expect it in your life. It says, lift up your eyes round about and see all they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy son shall come from far and thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. Then thou shalt see and flow together. Oh, glory to God. You're going to see and when we see, we flow together. There's true church unity right there. Unity birthed through the glory of God being released upon His church. Amen? And it says, look at this. And shall fear, fear God, not a virus. And be enlarged, increased, because the abundance of the sea, the abundance of the sea always represents the multitudes of people. Seas of people. The abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. They're going to come into the house of God. We're talking about our spiritual harvest. Multitudes of souls coming to the houses of God. Right now, there are a lot of churches in Georgia and the house, everybody God's going to birth in this area of his kingdom. It's time to fill stadiums. It's time to see God's plans fulfilled in their totality. But then it says, and the forces, that for the forces there is actually wealth. And the wealth of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. It's time for an inversion of the wealth of the wicked to come to the hands of the righteous. God's about to flip everything right side up once again. It's our time to arise. Now with that in mind, go to Isaiah chapter 47. What did I tell you to remember? Lift up your eyes round about and see. Go to Ezekiel 47. I don't know why I wrote down Isaiah. It's Ezekiel. I'm sure it's Patty's fault. She distracted me with her beauty. Isaiah 47. I don't want to take time to read the entire chapter, but it talks about Ezekiel being given a vision by God where he saw a river coming out from the temple. It started as a trickle, but the further he proceeded from that point, the deeper the waters got. I believe that distance from the temple represents a passage of time. In fact, he ends up being 4,000 cubits away from the temple, which a little over a mile, which could represent 4,000 years, which is the time from Adam until Jesus. First, the water started out, they were ankle deep after a 1,000. 
You can splash around in ankle deep water. You can wade, right? Little kids can wade in ankle deep water. But you can't do much fishing. Surely can't swim. As he went another thousand, the waters were to the knees. You can do more in knee deep water than you can do in ankle deep water. But he went another thousand. God sent him further, sent him deeper. I don't want you staying in splashing water. I don't want you taking him, staying in playing water. He sent him further away, further out. As he went another thousand cubits, the waters came to the hips, came to his waist. You can swim in waist deep water, right? You can fish in waist deep water. You can have, you can, you can still have a fun time in waist deep water, but you can't dive. You can't go deep. You can't explore anything. You can pretty much see everything down at your feet if the water's very clear. So he sent him another thousand. And I want to pick it up in verse number five. This is afterward, he measured a thousand. The angel was leading Ezekiel in this vision. And it was a river that I could not pass over. For the waters were risen waters, risen waters. If we will arise, God will raise the waters. If we want to dive deep, God will make the waters as deep as we want to go. They were risen waters to swim in. A river that could not be passed over. And he said unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen this? Lift up your heads, lift up your eyes and see the glory of God is on the horizon. I'm recalling right now the story where Elijah had commanded that it not rain. And for three and a half years, there was no rain. But at the end of that period, God said, I want you to pray that it rain again. So he did. He set himself to pray. As he prayed, he sent his servant out to say, go look on the horizon. See me. Tell me if you see the rain. And every time the servant would go back, he'd bring back a negative report and say, there's nothing out there. So Elijah would say, go again, look again. And on the final trip, the servant comes back and says, I see a cloud the size of a man's hand. And Elijah says, that's it. That's what we've been looking for. That's the promise. And rain came through a cloud the size of a man's hand. Now, how many of you look out and you see a little cloud out on the, out on the horizon and think rain's coming? But Elijah knew to take what God had given at that moment and grab a hold of it and place his faith in it. And the rains returned. I see a cloud of glory bigger than a man's hand. I see a cloud of glory coming to us right now that cannot be ignored. Son of man, have you seen this? Yes, I've seen it. You've seen it. Don't let go of that vision. Don't let go of what you're looking at, what you're focusing on. It's our time to arise. He says there are risen waters. Waters to swim in. That could not be passed over. See, waiting time for the church is over. Splashing time for the church. That season is done. And God's raising up a swimming church. A church who refuses to play games with the power of God and the promises of God, the Word of God. They refuse to play around with sin. They refuse to play around, uh, you know, with spiritual activities. Doing a little devotional now and then. Going to church when it's convenient. God's raising up a vigilant. I'm talking, He's raising up a church that is determined to take over everything the devil has stolen from them, to take back. It's our time to arise. And where he says it could not be passed over, the glory is coming in a fashion it can no longer be ignored by the world. What an exciting time to be on God's side. Amen? He goes on in verse number 6. He says, Then he brought me and caused me to return to the brink of the river. The edge. Put him right on the edge ready to jump in. I can remember when I was young, there was little I loved to do more than swim. I just loved to be in the water. And when we thought we were going to get to swim, 
We couldn't get in until we were told where we get right to the edge. Because when mom or dad said, okay, you can get in, it, we're there. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Honk a horn on that one. And God's calling us to come right to the edge, be ready for what God's going to do, get ready for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. It's our time. It's time to arise. But here's another point with that. That word there, brink, in Ezekiel chapter 47, verse 6, and the Hebrew is actually a word that means mouth or speech. Let me say that again. Where he told him to return to the brink of the river, the actual Hebrew says to return to the mouth or the speech of the river. It's time for us to control what we say. To speak what God has said. To declare the vision. To declare the glory. To declare the goodness of God. And right now, they were predicting all yesterday it was going to be raining right now. But we prayed. How many prayed with me that it would be clear today? It would be nice weather. We'd have no rain. And here we are experiencing the goodness of God without any showers. Thank you, Jesus. He answers our petitions. This may seem minor to some, but I know I prayed with some effort that we would have clear skies today. Because the enemy would have loved to have rained this out and cause us to run back inside, hiding from the raindrops. But God. So it's time to speak what God has said. To decree what He has declared. To speak the glory of God coming into our lives right now. It's our time to arise. Look at Acts chapter 12. Are you getting anything out of this today? Amen. Acts chapter 12. And here Peter has been put in jail. And let's read verse number 6. Start at verse number 6. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers. Herod wants to kill Peter. They've already killed James. He wants to kill Peter. And it says, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him. And a light shined in the prison. There's our light. There's our glory. A light came into the prison with Peter. Don't you know that got some attention? And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up. God had an angel raise him up. You may feel like you don't have the strength to do what God would call you to do, but an angel will strengthen you. You may think you need more fire, more energy, more power. An angel is going to help you. It says he smote Peter. The angel raised him up and look at what it says. Saying, arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. You may feel like you're incapable of doing what God called you to do. Or what you believe the Word says you're able to do. But if you'll arise, the chains will fall off. It's time for this church to go beyond their self, how can I say, self-assigned limitations. It's time for us to believe we can do what God says we can do. And to step out in faith and arise and do just those things. It's our time to arise. Let the chains go. Just let them go. Amen. Ephesians chapter 5. Ah, it's in here somewhere. There we go. Ephesians chapter 5, start at verse number 13. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. When we start to move out in the light of the glory of God, it will reveal 
all wickedness. The light always exposes darkness. But also it turns people from the darkness to light. It says, by the light for whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Therefore he saith, awake thou that sleepest. And arise from the couch. I'm sorry, I mean from the dead. Arise from the dead position, the place where you can't do anything, where you're not being able to be productive like you want to be productive, like you can't move out and be a blessing like you want to be a blessing. It's time for us to arise from that dead position. And Christ shall give thee light. I hope you're catching what I'm trying to get out this morning. If we'll arise, the chains will fall off. If we'll arise, the glory will come. If we arise, the light, God's going to give us light. All we've got to do is rise. We want to just step out. Come out of our houses when the doors are thrown open with the determination to be used by God. 2 Peter chapter 1. We're going to close here shortly. Better not anybody honk their horn on that one. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 19. Peter writes, We have also a more sure word of prophecy run to you do well, if you can hold your page down, you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place. Here again is the light shining in the darkness. God wants to use us for that. It says, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. If we will arise, God will arise within us. If we'll step out, God will step out with us. If we'll say, God, use me, God will do just that. He's looking for people right now. Then we're coming out of this place of lockdown. He can use like never before. I expect when we're able to come back together again in the building and fellowship like we're used to fellowshipping, only with more glory and more love, we will be saturated with testimonies how God's been using you in His power, using you, using you in His love, using you to change people's lives supernaturally. It's our time to arise. Amen? The day stars are rising in our hearts. Colossians chapter three. Well, no, let's go to let's go to James chapter one. I just want to touch on this. James chapter one. Let's go to verse number 11. Well, let's go to verse 10. No, verse 9. Verse 9. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. The enemy's tried to keep you low. He's tried to keep you non-expectant. He's tried to keep you in fear. But it's time for God to exalt us. Amen. It's time for God to bring forth spiritual promotions. Verse 10. But the rich, talking about the wicked rich, but the rich in that he is made low. Because as the flower of the grass, he shall pass away. For the sun is no sooner risen. The sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat, but it withereth the grass and the flower thereof falleth. And the grace of the fashion of it perishes, so shall the rich man be fade away in his ways. I read this verse a few days ago, where it talks about God is risen with a heat, and it brought to mind they're saying heat destroys coronavirus. That they're hoping for some heat waves to come into America that will kill off this virus totally. I believe it's going to happen. Whether by heat or whether the glory of God does it, it's going to die out. 
But God is rising up to put a stop to these efforts of the enemy to hinder the church from rising up. It's our time to stand up. It's our time to rise. Colossians chapter 3, closing with this verse. Colossians chapter 3, verse number 1. If ye then be risen with Christ. Are you risen with Christ? Seek those things which are above. Where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above not on things of the earth. For you're dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. Oh, praise God. We seek God and we set our affections on the things of the kingdom. That's what God's birthing in us right now during this shutdown time. He's given us time to seek Him. And I guarantee what he's doing in each person's life with a heart to seek him is he's re he's reoriented some of our desires. I heard another man of God say this recently once the shutdown started. In one day, virtually one day, God shut down. At least shut down half or more of the idols. In the United States. And one day he shut down the NCAA tournament. And one day he shut down the NBA. Major League Baseball. Soccer. Any gatherings. That may be considered. How can I say idol worshiping. Because many people worship the ball games and sports. More than they do God. Now I'm so glad I've been set free from sports worship. I've not missed it whatsoever. But I'm sure some people, when they shut down the NCAA and they're locked up in their houses, they're thinking, what do I watch on television now? God took away my main God. My main idol. See, I believe that works as well into the plans of God. That if you can't turn to your idol, maybe you'll take the time and turn to the true living God. And now instead of watching basketball hour upon hour and football and baseball or whatever other sport, now you're stuck with bowling reruns. Now we can turn our hearts upon the risen Savior. Seek those things above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of the Father. As you spend time with Him, you're gonna, you're gonna, it's going to build in you determination. I'm going to stand up as well. I shall arise. The stones of our own houses are about to be rolled away for each of us. And we then determine what are we going to do when we come out of that tomb, that place of limitation. What are we going to do? Hopefully we let the chains fall off. We march up and we let God use us like never before. It's our time. Time to stand up and arise. Amen? Now I decree over this church there are none sick, no COVID-19, no flu, no colds, even no allergies in this church. We decree it right now in Jesus' name. Every sickness flees. Miracle power is released right now to heal every member. Every member. I decree there's no lack where people are people in the nation and the world are suffering setbacks because of economic hardships, it has no effect on the people of this church. We prosper in everything we put our hands to. Money comes to us from 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 even unexpected sources. I decree everybody here gets a double promotion. I speak as well, even though we've been celebrated, I've been separated. There's no separation in our hearts from each other. We're still fully united as the covenant body.
In fact, the love of God increases on the lives of each one that are members of this church. No separation. Amen. No division, no strife, jealousy, envy, and no fear. I declare this is a fear-free church. We're not afraid of the virus. We do, we do use common sense and we try to follow the standards that are told us will help prevent its spread, but we're not afraid of it personally to come upon us. We have a covering over our lives that this sickness can't touch us. We rebuke fear of every form. I thank you, Father. No one in this church goes backwards during this time of shutdown. Each member rises up and says, God, use me. Give me light. And as we step out, I know that God's going to do that. I thank you for this church, Lord God. It's a church that's determined to manifest the glory of God. Bless each one as they go their way. And as their doors of their houses are thrown open shortly, let them explode with the power of the Spirit on their lives. We thank you. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank everybody for coming out today. And expect, go home and, and meditate it. Expect God to use you like never before. It's our time to stand up and rise. Be blessed.